Hello, and welcome back to Young Professionals Math Boot Camp. This first lesson, we're just going to talk about the basics and how to approach your math journey. A lot of people are afraid of math, but again, you do not need to be. Think about math like building a house. You can't begin building a house by putting in the windows or putting on the roof. You have to start from the bottom and work your way up. So these lessons are designed so that if you find yourself on lesson six, but you're using tools that we learned from lesson two or three, you can go back. So you don't want to move forward with math until you've mastered the first concepts. So these videos are designed to go in that order. One of the, something that I will tell people over and over again is that you really need to know your basic multiplication and your basic division. Again, these are the building blocks of math. Same goes for addition and subtraction. You want to know these very well. You want to memorize them. So there are many different ways you can do this if you don't already know your basic multiplication and division. There are a lot of charts you can find online. You can make flashcards. You can buy flashcards. They're very cheap at most stores. But Knowing these by heart will help you with fractions. When you master fractions, algebra will be that much easier. So again, you don't want to jump around and just think, oh, I can use a calculator, because knowing these basic facts will help you move through your problems much quicker. You want to remember the five steps of solving a math problem. And this, again, goes for all math, but especially for story problems. You want to identify the question. So make sure you understand everything. Make sure you understand the words. Make sure you understand exactly what you need to solve your problem. So sometimes with math problems, they give you more information than you need. Or some of the information that you need, you have to figure out first. You want to make out a plan and write that step by step on your paper. And then you want to carry out your plan. So all math. At some point, you're going to use a basic operation, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You might have to do several steps and incorporate those operations in different ways, but it always goes back to those basics. And then, of course, you want to check your results. So it sounds obvious, but a lot of times, especially when you are doing a long math problem that has several steps, it's easy to make a mistake. Even if you're using a calculator, you might punch in the wrong number. So always go back, double check your work, and figure out, does it actually make sense? Because maybe the answer is 10, but somehow you typed a number wrong in and you got 100. So go back and check your results and make sure that it makes sense. So again, these are steps that you can always go back to when you are doing math problems. Remind yourself this is the approach you want to take. And then there are signal words. And again, this isn't 100% true all of the time, but for the most part, you can use a chart like this. So for example, when you see plus, total, added together, increased by, you're probably going to add. When you see minus, difference, how much more, less than, you're probably going to be subtracting. When you are asked to find the product of a number, of two numbers or three numbers, that means you're going to be multiplying. So the product is the answer to multiplication. With division, you might see words like a piece, each, per, the quotient. The quotient is an answer to a division problem. So think about those things, too, as you're reading a story problem. Those should help you decide what operation to use. And again, math is not scary. It's something you have to practice. Like anything else that you want to master, you have to practice. You want to go back and rework the examples from this lesson, from your homework. So if you're trying to complete a multiplication problem in fractions and you forget the steps, go back to your lesson and look through or watch the example and do it on your own paper step by step and that should help you remember and know how to complete that problem. And again, practicing is the best way. You should never expect to master something by doing it once or even twice. You're going to have to practice over and over. One of my favorite quotes is from Vince Lombardi, who was a professional football coach. And that is, if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough. So I think this is true with everything, and it applies to math as well. If you 
go through every single math problem and get them right, that's great, but that means you probably can challenge yourself even more if you want to, if you want to go on to higher math. But the fact that you're making mistakes when you try to complete a problem, that's okay. Again, that means you want to go back and rework your steps, even have somebody help you. So you could ask your tutor or your teacher, a friend, someone that you know is good at math, and have them help you. Sometimes you just need an extra set of eyes. Again, write out the steps. Don't try to do it all in your head. With the GED and with many other standardized tests, you are allowed to use a calculator. But again, if you depend on a calculator for every single step, it's going to take you a long time to get through. If you can do a few things on paper, or if you, you, know, if you know your multiplication and division by heart, that's gonna help you a lot. But don't start with a one step and then think, okay, I know that number, now I'm gonna put it in here. No, write it down. Also, because you are allowed to use a calculator for most tests, you wanna practice both ways. So practice doing the problem by hand and then practice using your calculator as well. That will help you to make sure you know how to use the calculator and also it will help you on the test when you wanna check your work. Again, just because you're using a calculator doesn't mean you can't make a mistake. You could type in the number wrong, you could accidentally hit the wrong operation. So you wanna practice both ways. And if you're taking one of the standardized tests at Michigan Works, or at other places, you might, you'll probably use a basic calculator that has just very basic functions. If you are going to take the GED, you will have this calculator, and this is what you wanna practice with. So again, not every calculator is the same. You wanna make sure you practice with the one that you're allowed to use, and you practice a lot, because you wanna be able to move as quickly as you can through the test. So I hope that helps you be a little bit more excited about building your basic skills and helps you worry a little bit less. And if you get stressed out, come back to this lesson and just think about the advice that we have for you today. Now we're gonna move on to our next lesson.